awesome friend of mine um, that does pens. He turns pens. I've known him since we were kids. And he um, messaged me asking me if I would be interested in some wool material to cast. So I said, of course, yes, because why not? So he sent me this stuff. You know who you are? It's, best way to describe it, it's almost like the, I don't know, it's like papery but plasticky at the same time. I have no idea what it is. Um, but it's pretty cool looking. It's like a disco ball in a bag, but broken. So, <laughs> I'm going to cast it in the leftover shavings, the Forstner bit shavings from the um, ocean bowl, the fish ocean bowl that Doug sent me. So I'm going to put a little bit of those in there and here and make probably like a jewelry box or a pot or something. But I'm going to go ahead and get these mixed, get the resin mixed, put in the pressure pot, and the next time you see this and this together. Look, there's stuff flying everywhere. It's like a party in here. <laughs> Anyways, the next time you see them together, they'll be all in resin. Exciting. See how precise I'm doing this? Precision. Precision is key. It's like a resin slushy. Bone pretty, y'all. I think that'll be appropriate for winter time for sure. Not that we get any snow here. Just now who's gonna clean this mess up? That gum it. In the pressure pot we go. Hey everybody. Hopefully you guys had a wonderful week and hopefully you continue to have a wonderful weekend as well. With this um, piece, which is very pretty, I just absolutely loved it with those sparkly uh, paper things in there. Um, it didn't record me making the waste block. What I did is I just took a scrap piece of ply that I had, um, pinched it in between the center and the chuck made a tenon on it and then turn it around flatten the face then I hot glued my piece that I'm working on now uh, to the face of it and then just for extra precaution I hot glued around the rim just to make sure that you know stayed on there good I was making a tenon anyway so the tailstock I don't think ever had to be removed while putting the tenon on so if you know if you can in any way use your tailstock that's obviously safest and best um, so that's what I chose to do so I wouldn't um, take off more material than than what was needed uh, to do this piece apologize for the <laughs> the resin rain there unfortunately when you're turning you um, are obviously trying to focus on what you're doing and not hurt yourself so looking at a camera is you know few and far between so I apologize for that so I'm using my bowl gouge to um, cut this stuff down. 
the material I used, again, I still don't know um, what exactly it is, but it, it's like, uh, uh, like a shiny paper, um, almost like aluminum foil stuck to a real thin piece of paper or, or sort of a waxy type paper. So the smaller bits did just fine in the resin, but you can tell when you're trying to cut a larger piece because it literally is like, it's like trying to cut paper with dull scissors. Um, at least that's what it felt in some areas where the resin didn't stick to the paper very well. Um, it would just chip right off of it like a clean broken glass. It was very strange. So those are some challenges with that, um, that material that was put in there. Um, and just pieces would chip out and then have to keep, you know, going to try to even all out again. And, and then sometimes you can just tell that your, your gouge or tool was just not cutting it. It's just trying to cut paper with dull scissors. It was very strange, but in the end it turned out just fine. So, um, I could tell when I'd hit a patch or so of the paper that was really exposed in the resin because it really clogged up the sandpaper too. So that's why I have my uh, big eraser that I have sitting over there because I would run it across the um, sandpaper, you know, every so often to get that paper stuff just unclogged from the sandpaper because it was just clogging it up really good. But that is good to have anyway because you know a lot of oily woods and things like that will clog up your sandpaper so I usually keep one of those big erasers around. I've had it for a long time now and it's lasted me a while. I even use it for my belt sander so anyways that's a tip for you. I know they sell um, sandpaper cleaner uh, rubber things like at Harbor Freight um, but I just I had that big eraser and figured well it's pretty much the same thing so I'll use it. So this piece I used uh, two coats of Axe Abrasive Paste. Um, the paper in it, um, I don't know, it was really hard to get a good finish um, and get it really nice and shiny because anywhere where the paper was showing through it just would show a dull um, finish and so getting it shiny was a little bit of a challenge but it worked out. By the way, y'all cracked me up about my boots. <laughs> Everyone comments, well, I don't say everyone, but a lot of people comment about how can you, you know, stand having those shavings in your boots or, um, you know, how much shavings do you get in your boots? And I just want to answer that question by saying all of it, <laughs> all of the shavings get into my boots and it doesn't bother me. It honestly really doesn't. I don't even think about it. Um, and, you know, coming from a, a girl who really likes to spend a lot of her time barefoot, um, but that's frowned upon while you're wood turning. <laughs> I, um, it just doesn't bother me any, uh, with the shavings in there. I have had my feet stuck in them before and I've had to vacuum the shavings out in order to get my foot out. So that's interesting. And I just, um, I don't like wood shavings in my socks. I don't like, you know, I don't like that in my laundry because I do laundry. So I don't, I really don't have a good explanation. That's just... That's just how I do things. Strange and weird and different as it might be. Whatever. So I parted off the lid and I accidentally got a little bit of a catch because my tool rest is actually too high for the particular tool I'm using. Um, I should have probably checked that before I started. So that's why I got that catch and it knocked it out of the mortise. Thank goodness it didn't go flying. Um, so I'm clearing it out and all the tools that I'm using, I'm going to be um, listing them in the video and they will also be uh, a link for them in the description below so that way you can find them and if you want to use them or another tool that's fine I just want to provide as much information as I can about what I'm using for you guys um, the little stick I was using <laughs> I also put the velcro 
I found some really good Velcro on Amazon. Um, so I just wrapped the Velcro around the stick and then put the foam pad on there and it stayed on there. I never had it fall off or anything. I was very impressed. It's just DIY, you know, sanding stick and the foam pad really helps to get it to shape and form to the inside of the container really well. It worked good. So I put the link in the description below for those um, items that I used for that little DIY. Minus the stick. You have to, you know, come up with your own stick. Anyways, um, Axe has so generously offered my viewers a 10% off. So in the description below, if you click the link to order the Axe Abrasive Paste, um, your code will be KIM10, all capital letters KIM, and the number 10. Um, so just put that in your cart when you go to check out and you'll get 10% off. Uh, thank you, Tom, for doing that for my subscribers. So here I'm working on the lid and the tricky part is getting it to fit without it being too loose. Um, this one I had to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth that I kind of made the lid a little looser than what I like. Um, so it kind of moves around there a little bit, but, um, it's okay. You know, the lid comes off. You don't want people struggling trying to get their stuff out of it, but on the other token, you don't want it to just fall off. So, um, that comes with practice. I, I don't do pots a whole lot, these little jury boxes, a whole ton. So I, um, kind of out of practice with them, but the more you do, the more you'll <laughs> get them right, I guess. Um, so I did a mortise type um, inside of the lid so that way I can just turn it around and finish the top. The video cut out and did not record me um, shaping the outside, the top side of the lid, but I just pretty much took the tenon off and, and did sort of like a mild mason jar type lid for it. And then, of course, the, you know, the video didn't record that of me finishing it or anything. But my finish was the Axe Abrasive Paste. I didn't use the restoring polish because there was no wood in there. And um, I just felt that the Obi Shine Juice would be plenty. And it was. It was just fine. Um, I try to reserve my products because, you know, you don't want to just waste them on any old thing. <laughs> so clean it off with denature alcohol um, before I apply any uh, finish or even the axe abrasive paste and then um, I turn it around and do the same on the other side and then at the end there are of course photos I did forget that I put um, glow-in-the-dark powder in this so when I took pictures I didn't even think to take pictures of it in the dark because I totally forgot I put uh, glow-in-the-dark powder in there so I don't have a picture of it glowing in the dark, but it does. The uh, family I gave it to um, said that her and her kids were all in the closet looking at it glow in the dark, and they really had an exciting time doing that. And th um, thank you for sharing that uh, because that was just really neat to hear, and it, it made me smile, and, and I had just totally forgot, and we all kind of had a surprise. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I know it's a short video, but... Um, it's a quick little project that turned out beautiful. I really had fun doing it, even even with all the challenges. Um, that pot looks wonderful with that iciness to it. So I thank everybody for watching. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and God bless.